Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Fatherhood. This is part two, episode part two. I'm your boy, Cornelius Anders, and I'm here live and direct, and I just want to share a couple of quotes, a couple of scripture from the Bible just to empower you guys concerning fatherhood on today, and it reads, Luke 4 and 4, and Jesus said unto him, it is written that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. You must live by every word of God, meaning when you speak, you eat. When you speak, you eat, good or bad. So speak God's word over your life every single day. Every single day, I'm blessed, I'm royal, I'm unique, I'm holy, I'm righteousness, I'm filled with God's presence, I'm the head and not the tail, I'm above only and not beneath, I'm the lender and not the borrower, I'm courageous, I'm royal, I'm unique. I am a great man of character, a great man of integrity, a faithful, loyal, gentle, kind-hearted man to everyone I come in contact with. I bless them every single day of my life. If a man is going to be effective as a man, he must establish God's word to be first place in his life. First place in his life. A man isn't truly a man if he's not living according to God's word for his life. That's heavy. I'm going to read that one more time. If you're going to be effective as a man, you must establish that God's word have first place in your life, in every part of your life, spiritually, physically, financially, socially, emotionally, and mentally. A man isn't truly a man if he is not living according to God's word for his life, for his family, for his children, for, every, for his business, for every detail part of his life. So I'm going to say amen to that. That's real talk. God's word have the ability to get into a man's heart and deal with his weaknesses, his flaws, his shortcoming, and develop him. That's heavy. I'm going to say that again. God's word has the ability to get into a man's heart and deal with his weaknesses and develop him in character. Find a man that have a true character, that have true character and walking in integrity. You will find that that man have given God first place in every area of his life. So when you wake up in the morning, get dressed, brush your teeth and all that good stuff like that, begin to worship God, get in his presence, lift up your hand, cry out to him, give him your heart, give him your heart, worship him, pray to him, humble yourself before him, get in his word, asking God, him, he, the Holy Spirit to help you in every area of your life. We have to put the word of God first in our, in our life to be effective in every part of our life. We have to put the word first. We have to put the word first because you are amazing. And when you put the word, first in your, the word first in your life, your kids and your children, it'll be easy to help love them and father them. Getting them up every day, showing them and teaching them how to praise God, how to worship God. Your kids learn how to worship God and praise God when you model that in front of them. Get up early before anyone get up. Lift up your hands and start worshiping. Put on good worship music or whatever music you like Listen to that will get you in that present, that will get you in God's present so you can be empowered to fulfill your God-given purpose for that day and to help your wife and children fulfill their God-given purpose for that day. We need God. We can't make it without him. If you're going to be effective and be a person of character and great integrity, dealing with your weaknesses, your shortcomings, dealing with those things that hinder your effectiveness as a husband, as a father, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, as a life coach, as a pastor, as a artist, as a man of God. These things hinder your effectiveness like porn. We can't watch porn even though we know it's wrong, but so many men are dealing with it. And I'm going to deal with it today. I know because I came from it. No longer bound with that. But what I'm saying is, once you get in God's word, every single day, say his word over your life, study the word, cry out, and put the word first place in your life, seeking him over the process of time, you will begin to be free from porn, from masturbation, from alcohol, from drugs, from uh, anger, from rage, from strife, from pride, from jealousy, from pain, from strongholds that the enemy had us in bondage for years. 
They are broken off your life once you put God and his word first place in your life and make it a habit every single day to practice God's word in your life to deal with these weaknesses that destroy man. It destroyed David. It destroyed Solomon. Those weaknesses that we refuse to deal with that we don't want to talk about because we say we are our own boss. We do whatever we want to do. This is our life. Right? I'm just trying to help you, fam. No condemnation at all. Whatever you're battling with, all what I'm all what I'm saying, whatever you're battling with, God's word have the ability and the power to uproot all those different things that's in you out, so you can be free and be the man that He called you to be. You feel me? And this is fatherhood one on one. I'm just sharing my heart and giving you some quotes. I had a great mentor, Pastor Carl Eugene Bevere in Adrian, Michigan. He taught me everything, I, basically everything I knew about fatherhood, the highs and the lows, the pros and the cons, and what I must do to be effective as a man, as a person, as an artist, in every part of my life to follow his principles. So I study his books, I read his books, his curriculum, and I'm a great, awesome, a man of God on today because it was him. His help, his word, and God's word that I put first place in my life. And you can do the same if you allow God's word to rule in your heart. It's going to cost you everything. No sacrifice, no greatness. I don't care what the addiction may be, or what they said, what anybody said, or what even you have said over your life. I'll never amount to this. I can never be great. I can never be a great father. For every time I try and try and try, I fail. I guarantee you, when you put God's word first place in your life truly and submit to authority and get up every day, lifting up your hands, raising your voice, crying out to God, crying out to God who is able to save your soul, your mind, your will, your emotion, you will become free and liberate from anything that the enemy have had you in captivity and bondage over. Christ has redeemed you and I from the curse of the law. Walk in it, embrace it, diagnose it, eternalize it, and make it a practice in every part of your life. You are a winner. I say you are a winner, boss. You are a winner, my sister. You are a winner, king. You are a winner, Lord. You feel me? You are a winner. You are a winner. You are winning right now when you say God's word over your life. You wake up winning. You go to bed winning. You fall asleep winning. And I need you to be a seven-figure husband, house band. Most people in the world, entrepreneurs, they're making six and seven figures, right? That's good. Congratulations for that. But are you a seven-figure, eight-figure father at home? Are you an eight-figure husband and loving your wife as Christ loved the church and washing her and pruning her concerning God's word? Are you a seven and eight-figure husband and wife? Yes. That's the goal for you to become that. And I'm just giving you on part two, episode part two of fatherhood, some of the things that you can practice in your everyday life so you can become that seven figure and eight figure husband and father that you need to be and for your children need you to be and for the world need you to be. Ain't you tired? Ain't you tired, man? Ain't you tired? You got to get to a place and a point in your life where you just sick and tired of failing. You sick and tired of the mundane, the mediocre. You just get tired of it. There is nothing mundane, mediocre, average, or common about you. You are great. You are great to the core. You are great to the core. And I just want to say a prayer over your life right now that, Father, I pray that every man and every woman, every teenager, boy, girl, they're hearing my voice. I pray that your power and your word will rule and rest in their hearts, that they will yield unto you every single day of their life, that they will put you first, the word first, and they will be lit, lead, and they will be uh, uh, guided by your word and your truth every single day of their life. They will walk in their purpose, their destiny, their, their calling, their fulfillment, that anything that you have called them to do, they will fulfill their purpose right now in Jesus' name. These are a blessed royal hood. You are a blessed royal hood. You are amazing. And I speak the power of the blessing over your life. What is the blessing? The blessing is an empowerment. It's an endowment for you to prosper. I'm going to say it once again. The blessing is an empowerment. An endowment for you to prosper in every area of your life. Every area. Spiritually, physically, financially, socially, emotionally, and mentally. Relationships with friends, with partners, in marriage. Every area of your life. 
That's the same thing for the curse. The curse is an empowerment, an endowment for you to fail in every part of your life. Spiritually, physically, financially, socially, emotionally, and mentally. But we cancel out all the curse. Because we're going to put God's word first in our hearts, our mind, our will, our emotions. And God's word is going to make us who God called and ordained for us to be in such a time like this. I love you. This is Cornelius Anders Music. I will be back with part three. In the meantime, in between time, have a great day.